Normally I wait until the end of the projects to film these videos and to cut together time lapses. But the project I'm working on at the minute is quite involved. Um, it's a bit more complicated than most of my previous projects and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So I don't want to rush it and I don't want to um, skimp on the details in the final video. So I'm going to make this video now and then one at the end as well probably. So what am I making? I am making this. Well, this is a, a full-size mock-up of what I'm going to be making. Um, it's digital organ pedals for a friend of mine who he's um, he's played on a real organ before and he's using a electric keyboard at the minute and he's interested in trying some pedals for his electric keyboard but not interested enough to spend the £500 it would cost to buy a professional set. So he asked me what I thought would be involved in making a set of pedals. After some research on the internet, it turns out loads of people have done this. It's quite a common project. I thought it would be quite niche, but it turns out that, you know, turning pedals into MIDI pedals is really common. Although most people start with an actual set of pedals rather than trying to build their own. Um, obviously, my final ones won't be made out of cardboard and wood. They'll mostly be 3D printed. And in producing the key mechanism, um, I've learned quite a lot. So let's have a look at some of the revisions I've made so far and what, was, what I've learned whilst doing that. So this is revision one. There's a 3D printed key that mounts around a bicycle bearing. On the back of the key is a neodymium cube magnet, which moves towards and away from a Hall effect sensor on a dev board, which here is connected to an Arduino. I'm thresholding the analog signal from the Hall effect sensor to detect the key movement. Here I've added a wooden mock for the key and a bent coat hanger to act as a compass spring to return it to horizontal. So now we've moved to a Teensy 4.0 microcontroller with which we're generating MIDI output which we're feeding into the Mac. So if we combine our Teensy powered MIDI controller with our key unit, we have a one key keyboard. In version one, the spring was at the front here, it was made out of coat hanger wire. The trouble was it was actually a bit fierce. If you put two turns in it, it was a good spring, but it was actually a bit strong. And so in order to get around that, I needed to put an arm on the back so I could move it to a smaller tension spring at the back here. The next thing I discovered was that these bicycle bearings, whilst they give lovely smooth movement, they introduce a surprising amount of side-to-side -side play. Not in the structure itself, but actually within the bearing. The next revision of the key mechanism used a solid 3D print rather than a bearing at all. Key 3, and you can see there's a tension spring at the back here, there's a foam pad there which absorbs and dampers the, the return for the spring, and the magnet is moving up and down here towards the Hall effect sensor. The problem with this board was the signal to noise ratio. The, move, the mechanical movement's great, the amount of movement on the magnet is just much too small. So here we're up to key mechanism 4 and mounting rig 8. The significant difference here is the magnet and the sensor board have moved orientation and moved to the back here at the long end of the lever. So when I lift the lever, the magnet is lifted out of the detection range of the sensor board, giving a much cleaner, stronger signal for the same amount of movement. So now we can monitor that magnet with a very high signal to noise ratio. And with a bit of software and cleverness, you can see the saw tooth trace there from me pressing the key. We can play a MIDI note when we detect the key has lifted the magnet out of the range of the sensor. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this so far. I'll report back once I've made some more progress. Thanks for watching and stay safe.